What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and I am here today with a review for Delilah. This is season one, episode one, and it's titled Everything to Everyone. That that's an understatement, <laughs> to say the least. Um, you guys, I was I knew I was gonna review this show when I saw that my girl Jill Marie Jones is in this um show. And I do apologize, you guys, that the video was late. This is late, and you know, the oval is late. I apologize about that. Um, the reason that it's late is because I had an open house yesterday for Clark Atlanta. Finally, after months of trying to reach out to somebody, I've spoke to someone. So now we're in the beginning stages of, you know, going back to school. I'm really a little bit nervous about this because I haven't been in school. I graduated college six years ago. This should be seven, actually. I think this should be seven years that I graduated college. And, you know, I also found out that if I do get accepted, I'm have to move to Atlanta, which I'm not fond of, but we'll make it work. Although I don't know anybody in Atlanta, but yeah. So yeah, you guys, without further ado, let's get into this review, shall we? All right, you guys, so Delilah. So Delilah, oh wow, my skin is breaking out. Hmm. So Delilah, she has two children. Her kids are Maya and Marcus. And she has her nephew, Dion, that's with her. So Dion has been with um, Delilah for the last, she said five months to Marcus. Marcus says it's been six months and five days. So Delilah is a, an attorney. I don't know what kind of attorney she is. They didn't say, I'm, I don't know if she's a defense attorney. I'm assuming she's probably like a defense attorney, but maybe they'll explain it a little bit later. Um, so we see her as she's getting them all ready for school. And then we see her on the phone talking to her assistant, Harper, who tells her that, you know, she has a meeting with this young lady by the name of Demetria Barnes, who's looking for an interview. So at first, you know, um, she told her to cancel, you know, Delilah told Harper to cancel the interview. But then she says, you know what, go ahead and, you know, set it up. So um, now actually in the episode open, she had a text message from someone by the name of Leah, which we'll talk about Leah. So, um, Delilah took Dion to see, you know, well, she was taking him to school. So Dion is on the phone with his dad, Nate, and she talks to Nate on the phone. So she's asking about his mother, Christine, you know, is Christine ready to take Dion back? Like, what's the situation with that? So, um, you know, Nate tells her right now, no, that she's not ready to take him back. And we're going to talk about that in episode two. Lord, that is really bad. Like a constellation on my hand. Um, Where was I at? So then she tells him that Leah Davis had texted her. And, you know, Nate was like, do not respond to Leah. She's like, oh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm not responding to her. So then we see as Delilah makes it into her office, we meet Harper and Harper says, um, yeah, Miss, um, you know, hey, Delilah, Miss Leah, um, Miss Leah, she's in your office. And Delilah's like, really? She says, well, she told me that she dated Nate back in the day and that she, um, you know, she lived with you and Tamara, which we'll talk about Tamara in a little bit as well. She's like, yes, she did live with us and she did date Nate for a brief time. So then Delilah goes into her office and like I said, um, Leah's there. So Leah tells Delilah that she's in trouble and that she needs her help. She says that there was a guy who was working for this company that she worked, that she was an assistant at, that he got fired from his job. And, you know, she was going around trying to figure out why he got fired. I mean, honestly, if I was Leah, I would—I just would have left well enough alone. Cause I mean, it's—it's—it'll it, get int intricate, so we'll definitely talk about. It, but yeah, Leah should have left things alone. <laughs> so Delilah says, you know, I can't take your case. But then, you know, eventually, she says, you know what? Um, cause um, Leah was talking about she's about to be evicted from her apartment. So she's going to help her, but she's still not taking the case at this point. But let's pause here and let's move forward. 
All right, you guys. So later we see Delilah. So Delilah is talking to Gordon, who is, I guess, her. I think he's her ex-husband, about a performance that their daughter Maya is having. Now, Gordon is telling, you know, Delilah that he's not going to be able to make it. Spam risk. I hate when these people keep calling me. All right. Um... Uh, what was I yet? You know, it's a good thing about having this phone. I mean, this watch, because that would have definitely ended my video. Um, where are we? Where are we? Okay, so yeah, back to Gordon and Delilah. So the daughter Maya, she plays the vi she you know she's a violinist, and she's having a performance. So um, Gordon says that he's not going to be able to make it to the performance. Because he's meeting up with his editor and he's going to ask his editor for an advance. And I'm just like, damn. You ain't worth the lick of, you ain't worth two pennies rubbing together, huh? So then we later see um, Delilah as she's talking to Tamara, who is portrayed by my girl Jill Marie Jones. And, you know, they're talking about this whole, you know, case with Leah. But. Tamara doesn't feel that what Leah's saying is on an up and up. Tamara feels like, like she's telling like Delilah, you know that girl didn't get fired for, you know, injustices. You know how she is. She got fired for something, <laughs> you know, that she caused. So, and she's like, and then, you know, Tamara's telling Delilah, like, girl, do not take the case. And, you know, Delilah's like, I'm not taking the case. Like, you don't have to worry about that. So then we um, meet Miss Barnes, and I was looking at her for the longest time. I'm like, this girl looks familiar. And then I decided to look her up, and I'm like, oh, that's right. She was on the last season of Orange is the New Black. Um, now she's a very nosy person. You know, she's um, asking about the office space. I'm just like, girl, you don't even, you don't even have a job here, but you asking so many questions about this office. And then she's asking, is Delilah normally late? Now, if you're looking for an interview, you don't want to offend your boss or anyone that works with your boss by saying, Are, is she typically late? That's unprofessional. I'm just saying. So um, Delilah comes in and they go for a walk. So then um, Ms. Barnes is telling Delilah how, you know, she looked up to her. She's the reason that she went to law school. And basically, she's looking for a job. Now, Delilah's like, yeah, at this point, you, you said it yourself. My office is small. I don't have enough room for, you know, nobody else. So it's a no on, it's a no on that one. So then let's see where we're going to go. So Maya. So Maya is talking to her, her friend. I think her name is Flo. I'm going to have to get these characters named down eventually. But I think she's, her name is Flo. So she's talking about this performance that she's going to have and how she's nervous about it. And also, she's, you know, worried about, you know, her, her violin. I guess her violin is old and it doesn't, I guess it might not sound good to her. So, um, I, you know, I will say, though, that with her friend Flo, Flo is very encouraging to her. You know, she uplifts her friend and that's, I'm like, okay, I like a little Flo so far. Um, let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so next up we see um, Delilah as she's talking to someone named Mace. So Mace gives me a feel of, they are so loud upstairs, I don't understand why. So Mace gives me a feel, if you guys watched How to Get Away with Murder, he gives me a feel of Frank Delphine from How to Get Away with Murder and Elise Keaton's right hand man. So Delilah is talking to Mace and she's asking him to get some information about um, Gary Shea you know, the guy that Leah told her about. So um, he says he was, you know, he tells her he wasn't fired. He was actually like, you know, he um, he wasn't fired. He says, Leah, however, she was fired. And she was telling you the truth about what she was fired for. It was lateness and insubordination. But she was also involved in a domestic dispute at Fred Osborne's home. And he says, you know, the, um, that Leah and, you know, Fred Osborne's wife went at it with each other. So then, you know, um, we see Delilah and she's telling her that she can't take her case because Delilah went to her apartment. And she says um, that, you know, they want her to hand over her laptop 
and her phone and they'll pay her out. But she has to sign, you know, some like an NDA, I guess. So Delilah takes a look at it and she was like, um, don't sign this. Because they what it was, they wanted access to her social media. And she's like, you know, I can just rebuild that stuff all over again. But, you know, Delilah was like, no, don't do that. She's like, but girl, I'm going to get evicted and, and that money, that'll help me. And, you know, she's like, and then, you know, um, I was about to say the actress's name, but um, Leah, Leah was like, you know, she's like, How, when did this all happen? She says, just recently, she says, because they're watching me and they know that you are on it. So they trying to, you know, get this squared away as quickly as they can. So, you know, um, Delilah asked her, was she having an affair? She tells her, no, she wasn't. So, she, you know, she looked at the computer and she's asking her about the radios. And she says, you know, Leah tells her that those radios are very dangerous. So Delilah says, if you hold off on this, will you hold off on this if I pay your rent for the month? And, you know, she's reluctant. But, you know, Delilah's like, they're not going to do anything. They're going to they're going to wait. They're not going to do anything. <clears throat> um, so then we see Maya and, you know, her friend uh, Flo. They went to look at the violins and, you know, she saw one that she liked. But those violins are which I didn't know violins were so expensive. I'm glad I didn't play the violin in school. Um, let's see. So, you know, she, she at dinner, she was telling her mom how much the violin was, $10,000. Yeah, baby girl, that violin would sit on the stage, on that, on that wall. Wouldn't be something that I would buy. So let's, let's move forward, you guys. All right, you guys, so next we see Delilah. So Delilah went to talk to um, Gary Shea. And Gary Shea is defensive when she pulls, you know, t pulls up on him. He tells her, you know, I can't talk to you about this because he's being watched. Um, and then, you know, um, as Leah was, I'm not Leah, but as Delilah was leaving, she noticed a man in a white Land Rover just looking at her. I'm like, oh, this ain't good. So then she calls Leah saying, girl, don't you sign those papers? So then we see Tamara. So Tamara goes to, um, you know, one of her partners talking about, you know, he's, they're talking about Osborne. And, you know, he's talking about, you know, they're, um, they're leaving someone by the name of Rudy Miller. And he told her that he told Fred to expect a call from her. So then we later in the episode, we see Maya. She's, you know, doing her performance. And then Gordon shows up. So Gordon bought the violin for her. But he only put up $5,000. I'm like, how much was your advance from you? Did he say, I think he said $100,000 was what he got from his advance. We're we going to talk about him. We're going to talk about him in the next re episode review. So Tamara and Leah, um, well, no. Tamara asked um, Delilah about Leah. And she says, she's, you know, she tells her about, you know, her meeting with Fred. So Tamara tries to tell D like, let go of this Leah case. Like, because the thing is for Tamara, with her taking this case, this will be an end for her as a, you know, as a partner. So she's telling, you know, Delilah, don't take this case, please. Like, just don't take it because they don't want to go against each other at the, you know, they're best friends <clears throat> and they don't want to go against each other. You know, the one thing I will say about, you know, Delilah and Tamara their relationship is kind of it kind of gives you a feel of Joan and Tony's relationship from girlfriends. And also with Tamara, she kind of gives you a she's not, you know, she is selfish because I can definitely see that right off the bat. She's definitely selfish. Um, she's ambitious. And um but she's not like, so she has a little bit of similarities to Tony, but not that many. But she definitely has that, you know, that selfishness and that ambition. Whereas Tony has, you know, selfishness, ambition, vanity, all of that. So, you know, I can see a little bit of similarities. So, so um, Gary Shea 
at the end of the episode, he called um, Delilah, you know, to set up a meeting with him. So he's going to meet her on Sunday. So, you know, she talks to, um, so Delilah talks to Mace while she's dropping Dion off. And she asked him to look into that Land Rover that was outside of Gary Shea's home. So when she drops him, you know, she drops um, Dion off with Nate, you know, he asked her, she asked him if he ever used those radios. And he says, yes, everybody in the, you know, in the, in the um, army, what, whatever branch of the, you know, whatever branch he was in, he said, yeah, everybody used it, but there was never nothing, you know, so dangerous about it. So then they talk about his, you know, his wife, Christine, not coming for Dion. And I'm trying, you know, I was trying to figure out like, what is going on with the mom? Is she on drugs? Like, what's up with her? Um, I don't know if they mentioned it in this episode, so I'll definitely mention it in the next episode. So, um, while she's with um, Nate, Mace gives her a call and he tells her that, you know, he's outside of Gary Shea's house and Gary Shea is dead at this point. I was like, oh, that escalated quick. Lee. But that was the first episode, you guys. It was an introductory episode, so it wasn't a whole lot. It got juicy at the end. But that is it. Um, let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Please leave the, your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. And until the next one, you guys stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance. And also, you guys go subscribe to that planner channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. So the next one is going to be episode two of Delilah, followed by episode four of the Oval.